In this video, I'll show you several examples of soldering bench ventilation systems that are not overly expensive and will keep your studios cleaner and safer. I'm Greg Greenwood and welcome to my studio. Your studios and soldering areas are all unique that require different solutions for ventilation. I would like to show you some of the raw materials that are available to you for building your own unique ventilation system. The first step is deciding what is the layout of your studio. Does it have a window or a door? Can you cut into the wall to put in a vent tube? Will the ventilation be temporary or permanent. Let's start with the bare minimum of the hardware options. A small fan next to the soldering area. This will remove the soldering fumes away from the soldering area but not from the studio. A fan in the window. Great for summertime but not as convenient in winter. If your studio is lacking in space you can set up the soldering area on your kitchen stove and use the exhaust hood for ventilation. Benchtop fume absorbers are a good option if you don't have access to the outside. They are available on the internet and at jewelry supply houses in a wide range of prices. Many of these units are self-contained and do not need any ductwork. Fans are great in the studio. But when we're soldering, we want our ventilation and exhaust systems to be a little bit more concentrated around the area where we're going to be soldering. To do this, we need duct work. I have three examples of some ducts here that you can use in your studio. The first is a very, very super flexible plastic duct here. And uh, it's really great because it will go around corners very easily. You can hide it in corners and uh, it can fit your studio very, very easily. Great for temporary use for exhausts. The, the major problems with this is number one, that it is plastic and it will melt. And number two, on the inside of the ductwork, it has a lot of ridges and those will slow down the flow of the airflow through the ductwork. Another one is aluminum flexible. This is really nice. It eliminates the melting problem and uh, it is very flexible, a little bit more expensive and does lend itself to temporary or permanent installations. The third here is a galvanized rigid ductwork here and this is really nice because it's super, super smooth on the inside and it does not restrict any of the airflow. The only time it restricts airflow is when you're going to be using elbows. And when you attach elbows to it, it will slow down the airflow through the ductwork. This lends itself more to a permanent situation and a more permanent installation for you. Let's take a look at the working ends of the ducts that we've been looking at. The flexible plastic duct work, you can just simply cut it off and use it raw and position it in any position around your soldering area. But as you can imagine, this is plastic. We're working with torches at a high temperature. So that's not really a very good idea because this can melt and burn. Let's solve that problem. You can take a metal elbow and insert it into the end of the ductwork and then that's solved the problem of the melting and burning. This makes a real nice ending to the flexible ductwork. Again, that flexible ductwork is so nice because it can fit around corners and it's very obviously flexible and so it could be a real good choice for you. But I would make sure that you get a metal end to the ductwork. The aluminum flexible duct is quite nice because you don't have to worry about the melting like we do in the plastic. 
You can use it the same way as you did the plastic. It is a little bit less flexible than the plastic, but still quite convenient and can work for a good temporary or permanent solution. The rigid duct can be used raw at the end, but there is a good alternative that will make it function much better, and that's using a straight boot. It acts like a funnel at the end of the ductwork, and it will suck in much more of the fumes from when you're soldering. Because this is a little bit more of a permanent installation, you can use it from behind or to the side or even from above on your soldering area. This is a great alternative and works really well for a permanent installation. With ductwork, you must have some way of moving the air from the working end to the exhaust end of the duct. You can use a box fan, enclose a boot, attach the ductwork, and point the fan out a window or door. A bathroom exhaust fan is a nice alternative. Attach the fan to the working end of the duct and place it near your soldering area. Be aware that most grills are plastic and can melt. Inline fans are the most popular and practical for ducts. Here is an example of an inexpensive inline fan. Just plug it in and it starts. It is best if you can plug it into an outlet that is switched so that you can turn it on and off when in use. There are many types of inline fans with built-in switches and in a wide range of prices. Building box stores, HVAC suppliers, and online suppliers are good sources. Another example is a kitchen vent hood. It has the fan built in and only needs ductwork attached. This is the hood that I use in my studio. I like it because it has two speeds for the fan, a light, and it vents both the soldering areas and my pickle pot. It is vented to the outside through the wall. Let's look at the exhaust end of the duct. You can take the duct work and simply use the raw end and stick it out the window. Or you can put an elbow or a vent cover on the end of the duct work and stick it out the window. You also can go through the wall and put an in-wall exhaust vent cover. Here's a couple examples. I hope these examples have given you some ideas for your studio. Be creative, think airflow, and I'm sure you will come up with the perfect solution for your studio. Let me know your ideas in the comments. They're always very interesting. Please subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any of the future videos. I'm Greg Greenwood. I'll see you next time.